Hello and welcome to Being Boss, episode number 79. This episode is brought to you by FreshBooks Cloud Accounting. Being boss in work and life is being in it. It's being who we are, doing the work, breaking some rules, and even though we each have to do it on our own, being boss is knowing we're in it together. Today, we are talking all about the chalkboard method. So it is a method for making money, tracking goals, and it's there's a little bit of magic involved. And we've been talking about it over and over and over again. So finally, we are dedicating an entire episode to sharing what the chalkboard method is all about, how it works, and how you can use it in your own work and life. But first, I have to mention that we are selling a course on the chalkboard method. We're going to share everything we know here in today's episode, but if you need a little more guidance or want a little bit more of a templated um, step-by-step, here's how you do it, go to beingboss.club slash chalkboard and you can take our course there. So today we're talking about the chalkboard method for tracking goals and really manifesting clients who have cash or selling products that will get you cash, but it doesn't replace the systems that we use for legit tracking. And one of those systems that we use is FreshBooks Cloud Accounting. So I love using FreshBooks to track the money coming in and the money going out. And just like the chalkboard method, FreshBooks makes it so visual. I can go to my dashboard and see exactly where I'm tracking with my own goals in my business. I can also look at what other businesses that are similar to mine are doing in in the industry. So I can see if I'm kind of on par with what the standard is, which is always really nice too. So try FreshBooks for free today by going to freshbooks.com slash being boss and enter being boss in the how did you hear about us section. Kathleen, I'm super excited about talking about the chalkboard method with you because it's kind of life changing and amazing and imperative for business folks. And it's your bit of magic that we're sharing. And it's about freaking time. Right? I'm so, so done with people asking us about the chalkboard method. Let's show them how to do it. <laughs> no, I mean, it's always happening in the Facebook group. Someone will mention the chalkboard method and someone else is like, what's the chalkboard method? And it turns out that the person asking what's the chalkboard method has never listened to being boss. Or we have you know, dedicated fans listening to our show that are like, wait, where do I find more information about the chalkboard method? I've heard you guys mention it a few times. Like, tell me what it is. So we decided we needed an episode that that just says what it is. Chalkboard method in the title. <laughs> we just want to be able to send one link that says right. you want to know what it is. Here it is. And so here it is. The chalkboard method. Starting from square one, the chalkboard method is a system for making goals and tracking them. It's really, truly as simple as that. But let me tell you how the chalkboard method started. So Tara and I were working with our executive life coach, Jay Pryor, and he is in episode number... 48-ish? Oh, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> we could be wrong. But um, one of our most popular, most listened to episodes with, was with Jay Pryor. And he has been instrumental in guiding me in my business and life. And I love everything that he does and shares and says. So Tara and I were working with Jay Pryor at the time. And we didn't have very many clients. We had just launched. It was a little bit like crickets chirping. And he said, you have to physically make space for your clients. And I was like, dude, there is plenty of space. And he said, the universe abhors a vacuum. So if you make some physical space for your clients, well, they'll come. Like kind of that, if you build it, they will come philosophy. So he recommended getting out a poster board or just something large and visual. And I happen to have a a chalkboard wall painted in my office. So I drew 10 empty spots on this chalkboard and it was really intimidating. It was really scary to acknowledge the fact that I didn't have any clients and that I had goals to make 10 clients probably within the quarter. But what was surprising is we filled our entire roster within a week. So at that point, I became a total believer, and we have been using our chalkboard to manifest clients, to manifest our goals, to keep track of them every single quarter since starting our business. So it's been about 
almost five years now that we've been using the chalkboard method. And I can tell you every single quarter it works like magic. I love that. I remember whenever you guys started using it and I remember you guys talking about it and like us talking about it as well. You were like, you were like, so I started putting names or blanks on a chalkboard and I'm like, why? And I thought it was so amazing, this idea of of making space for clients, but also the fact that it was so visual. And I think that's one of the things that I really want to point out here is like a lot of times we'll like, I'll get out a notebook and, you know, first page in a new notebook, set some goals for what I want to do over the next quarter or, or in a spreadsheet on your computer, sort of, you know, getting up in a spreadsheet and saying, all right, you know, this year I want to make this much money. I want to have this many clients, this much profit, whatever it may be. Um, but the thing that I love about the chalkboard method is that it is this big thing that's in your face. And so it's not like on a spreadsheet file that's hidden away, hidden away in your Dropbox, or it's not like in a notebook, you know, on a page you're never going to flip through again. It's something where you are visually reminded of the goals that you have set every time you look up from your computer. Um, and I think that's one of like the really magical pieces of it. We, we have all these tools for setting goals, um, that doesn't keep them in our face quite as much as the chalkboard method does. But this is like, legit big goal setting that you look at over and over again it's part of the magic of it Mm -hmm. and you know I have a lot of people asking me okay but how does it work and I want to share that the chalkboard method is kind of equal parts art and science there is no right or wrong way to do it you can do it any way you like and so even whenever we first started doing the chalkboard method I shared it with you, Emily, and then you started doing it, and your chalkboard looked a little bit different than our chalkboard, but it works all the same. And it boils down to having goals, committing to them by making them visual, and checking in daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly to really see your progress. So we're going to get into kind of step-by-step how you physically put chalk to your wall and make your chalkboard. And there are other ways that you can do it too. You can use note cards on a cork board. You can use a whiteboard. You can use a poster board. But like you said, Emily, the idea is to make it visual. And really, if you get anything from this episode, it's just find a space in your home or in your office to really get your goals up on the wall. Yeah, I think I think that that is the huge part. I've done the chalkboard before, and you're right; it was a little different from yours. Um, and we've seen tons of them. Like people have put them on Instagram and stuff, and everyone's is a little different. Um, I've also used just like those really big, like five by eight note cards, and literally just put them like right beside my computer screen. Um, and I think that you can do things like that, whatever sort of works for you, um, and do it. But Let's talk, let's talk about how you actually do it. So, um, the whole point of this thing is goal setting. It's like setting some hard goals, some hard, like trackable goals, which always makes me really happy. Um, and putting them down on something. So let's talk about how to set trackable goals. I know. I, one of the things I love about you, Emily, is that I'm all about goal setting, kind of like what you were talking about of opening the notebook and writing it down and, I'm definitely much more emotional about my goals. Like I think a lot more about how I want to feel and really what I want my ideal day to look like. And what I love about goal setting with you, Emily, is you're like, okay, but can we talk numbers? (laughs) How much money do we want to (laughs) make? Right? Well, I feel like... What are we doing? I feel like on some level, it's really easy to get... Or I get lost in the feelings of it. I think this is just like a difference in like the type of person you may be. Like some people need to focus on the feeling. I have the feeling down pat. I need like something trackable um, and like a really good metric to track. Um, So for me, it is about numbers. Like, you know, I'm not going to let money get in the way of feeling good because I'm not going to go after the money if I feel like shit. So like I almost like for me, feeling pieces is, is there. So I like to go straight for the numbers. Um, so yeah, that's, that's one of my favorite things about this is that it does kind of track bo- both of them. One of the elements I know you guys have of uh, the chalkboard method is your like, I don't know, almost your little like attracting icons. Like that's even yeah. this really fun, adorable part, which we'll get to in a minute. I know, uh, or I'm sure, right. We are going to get yeah, to like, we're going to get the to little, it, that how really it magical piece. Um, but let's talk about the trackable ones. Um, so like the key of it, the key of this, especially for you guys was making those blanks for clients that you needed. But to do that, you had to set a number. 
for how many clients you wanted for that quarter. And I will say, whenever I was first starting a business and only had one stream of revenue, like I think that this is an important part, is I started really simple. I didn't start with one-on-one service or multiple one-on-one services. I didn't start with a ton of digital products. I didn't start with even a ton of different ways to share content. I basically had one offering, one website. It was really simple. So in order to sell that one offering, I looked at how much money do I want to make? And let's just say for, this is not how much it was, but just for the sake of easy math, let's say I wanted to make $100,000 and each client was worth $10,000. Again, it was like probably a tenth of that. And so probably ten th- I probably wanted to make ten thousand dollars and each client was a thousand dollars. Um but I knew how much money I wanted to make and then I divided that by how much I could charge per project. I mean, it's really simple math here. And that's how I got that number. So I think that the chalkboard method or making it visual is a really great way to figure out how to price yourself. You look at how much money you want to make and how much you want to work, and you do the math. I mean, right? Definitely. Well, and let's talk about, so you guys do your, and I've done mine this way, like quarterly. So you can do a chalkboard for every month, every quarter, like an entire year if you want. Like if you do like these long-term projects where you're only going to need like four a year or something like that. Um, But you can, you can break it down into whatever time span you want. We've chosen quarterly. Um, And yeah, you figure out how much money you need to make in that quarter and how much money you charge per client and then do a little math and figure out how many spots you need. And then you make those spots on your chalkboard so that you have these blanks and like numbered blanks. And as you book clients, you fill them up. And this doesn't even have to be one-on-one client work. These can be, you know, retailers to wholesale your products, or it could be, um, It could be people who sign up for your e-course or your digital offering or whatever it may be. It doesn't have to be just one-on-one clients. You can, how many things do you want to sell (laughs) in any week or month or quarter of your business and make blanks for them. And then as people are buying them, you write them down. And I think that's part of the magic of it too, is every time you are booking a client, you're intentionally going to your chalkboard and making them a part of your business. And I think that, um, I think that that act of like putting them there is just as magical as not, or as you know what I mean? Another, another reason why making this huge and <laughs> We're talking about goal setting, but now we're just jumping in a chalkboard and that's okay too. But one of the things I love about having this big visual chalkboard and seeing your client names up there is that at the end of the quarter, you can really use it as a way to reflect on all the clients you worked with. And you can go through client by client and ask yourself, what did I love about working with that person? How did I best help them? What could have gone better? What about that person or the project did I not like? And you can really use the chalkboard as a way to refine and hone in on your dream client. You can use it to find holes in your process. So if you want to get into more advanced chalkboard methoding, um, we've even used it before to track clients we close on clients that we're in process with, and then clients that maybe move on to retainer or are done. And it's, it sounds more complicated than it is. And if you want to go to beingboss.club slash chalkboard, um, we'll hook you up with a little worksheet to show you like the most simple chalkboard method layout that we've got. But in our course that we're going to be launching, I'm going to be sharing up to, I think, 10 to 12 templates for a beginner chalkboard, an intermediate chalkboard, and an advanced chalkboard. But I want to go back to setting goals to track and really the process before you ever put your chalk to the chalkboard or your dry erase marker to that whiteboard. I want to really share how like my process for goal setting, because I think it's really important to be able to not get overwhelmed by this like huge blank chalkboard and just get it on paper first. So I do like getting out that journal, that notebook and really brainstorming all my goals. And I like doing it mind map style where I will maybe think of three big categories in my life that I want to set some goals around. So one might be braid creative and the work I do there. 
One might be being boss and the work I do here. And then another one might be, let's say, um, fitness and exercise or maybe even family and home. So these are all the kinds of things that I'm usually setting goals around. And then I will you know, draw little satellites around these big topics to really subcategorize different things in those areas. So in Braid Creative, I, I recently actually went through this process and under Braid, my goals there, even though we do one-on-one work, are really focusing on the Braid Method e-course and the digital product side of things to really focus on sharing content and making sure that I'm sending out at least one newsletter a week and one blog post a week and making sure that the content I'm sharing really supports our expertise. So really getting focused there. In being boss, you know, I think that a lot of goal setting, especially whenever you want to get specific about your goals, it's easy to say, it's it's really easy to pick the number of like dollars that you want to make. But what's interesting about being boss is that our goals for this year of really launching and creating the new website at beingboss.club isn't necessarily to become millionaires, but really to just grow our brand and grow our following. And then of course, Emily, you know, so I might share that with you. Like, hey, what if we really just focus on growing our brand? What does that actually look like? And then I think, Emily, you're really good at, and this is why you're my business bestie, because you're really good at saying, okay, but what does that actually look like to grow our brand and to grow our following? We do have to be able to measure that somehow. So I think it is good to, once you start to mind map out your goals or get a list on paper, to share it with a friend or a business bestie or someone who gets it, someone you trust, and they can really hammer down and ask you questions that will help you really get specific around your goal setting. But for you, Emily, you were like, okay, what does it look like to grow our brand? And for us, it looked like newsletter metrics. So growing our newsletter, it looked like relaunching the mini-sodes so that we had more episodes every week so that we could increase our download numbers and stay in the top of those charts on iTunes. Um, So we got really specific about what those goals look like in the real world. Um, Some goal setting around fitness and exercise might be as simple as drinking enough water every day or going for a walk every day. It doesn't have to necessarily be a number on a scale. And then maybe even around home and family, for me, it's travel and adventure and even projects around my house, like wanting to paint the bedroom, different things like that. So that's kind of how I start to mind map out all my goals. And then, like I said, I will take those goals and I will share them with a trusted friend. And I'll say, here's what I'm thinking. Here's what my goals are. What do you think about these things? So I think that's really great. I think that by taking these larger sections of your life and just sitting down in free form, like just going at the sort of things that you want to accomplish is a really great way to take take really big things and start narrowing it into more and more specific goals. And then once you have these goals, developing the metrics that you need to track it. I think that that's, um, that's a really great way to just sort of get it going. And I'm, I'm similar. Like I'll sit down with a notebook and just start writing like what are the things that I want to accomplish and what do I have to do to get there um but let's talk about what happens whenever you have all of these goals written out on paper in front of you and that is the fear that comes from potentially not reaching all of these goals you just wrote down so you mind mapped you have all these goals how do you feel Kathleen I mean (laughs) (laughs) I'm typically not afraid of that part of it. Like Mm -hmm. once I've mind mapped it, I'm pretty ambitious whenever it comes to wanting to to take over the world (laughs) and to design my life and to live the dream, right? But then I get scared whenever I start talking to you and you say, okay, how much money do you want to make? How many downloads do we want to make? Or how many downloads do we want to get? Like once I start putting metrics to my goals, I get afraid. And so I get more fearful whenever I get specific. And I think it's there's a combination of things happening. Like I start to fall into the comparison trap. So let's say my goal is to make $60,000 a year. For me, that sounds like a lot of money. For someone else, that sounds like they would be homeless on a sidewalk for $60,000 a year. I mean, I start to think, is this enough? Like, should I be making more? And so I think that I get really scared whenever I get specific and fall into the comparison trap or whenever I get really specific and I'm just afraid that I'm not going to hit those metrics. 
So, you know, it's funny because the chalkboard method in a lot of ways, it was creating space for making goals happen. But in some ways, it was also just a place where I could track what I attract, right? And so let's say social media metrics, for example, I didn't really have specific goals whenever I first started out. I was just using my chalkboard as a place to write down, here's how many followers I have on Instagram in January and then in February and then in March. So I could just start to visually track where I was at. Um, But I've learned through you, Emily, that whenever you set that bar, you're much more likely to go after it rather than just passively tracking what is coming your way. Right. And I think another thing I want to point out here, especially around some social media graphics, a little less so whenever it comes to revenue, because like, you know, not the end of the world if you don't make your goals, but if you don't make some revenue goals, that could be bad. Um, But one of the things that I want to say about that is, you know, the goals that you set for yourself are just yours. So unless you... uh, they're not tied to anything that's going to like absolutely ruin your life. And I think a lot of people go into goals with this idea of like, you know, if I don't meet this goal, then my business is done or whatever. And like, sure, there are some cases if you're like really, really not doing so great, that could absolutely be what's happening. But on the usual, that's not the case. Like if I make 10 slots on my, on my, um, client list and I only fill eight of them, then I'm probably going to be okay. And I think that a lot of people put way too much weight on goals and like measure their own self-worth by their own ability to meet their goals. Um, And I think for me, that was a mindset that you, that I just had to get over and I got over it a long time ago. And that's why it's so easy for me to like get specific and make goals is half the time I'm probably not going to make them (laughs) and I'm okay with that. Um, I think that once you can disconnect your like, own view of your self-worth and what other people are going to think of you, if you can disconnect that from the goals that you make, it's a lot easier to just put down numbers and work for it and not even care what happens, but simply be pleased with what with what the outcome ends up being. And I want to share this, that whenever you can, you know, put down 10 spots for a client list and you only fill eight, we talk a lot about reframing failure, but it's not a failure. What it's doing is it's giving you information about where there are gaps in your process or maybe gaps in your pricing. So let's say in general, eight clients, maybe that felt really good and the universe actually had your back and was like, girlfriend, you can't handle 10 clients, but I think you can handle eight. Then maybe what it means is you just need to raise your prices by $500 a client or $1,000 a client, whatever the math would add up to be, to make up for going from 10 clients to 8 clients. And we've done that a lot on our chalkboard method. And another thing that I want to mention is that there have been times that I have set goals. So one that I can specifically remember was not last year, but the year before, I wanted four speaking gigs just four in the year, and I filled one. I only got one speaking gig that year, and I didn't necessarily feel like a failure, but what it did point out is if I want more speaking gigs, I'm going to have to put attention on speaking. And so then we started a podcast, and I started speaking into a microphone every week, and this year, how many speaking gigs do you think we have? Like, I feel like it's almost one a month. (laughs) It's two a week, more or less. Um... (laughs) I don't even know. But, you know, I mean, we have we have a lot of paid speaking gigs, definitely made four, I think probably between and, and it's not going anywhere. Like we keep getting invited to speak more and more. And that's awesome. And so sometimes the goals that I set do not usually sometimes. Okay, sometimes the goals that I set don't always fall into the time frame that I specify, but they do eventually happen. And so I wouldn't have known or even remembered that I had set this goal to get four speaking gigs unless I hadn't seen it on my chalkboard for that full year. And now that I have more speaking gigs, I can say, oh yeah, remember that year where I had four spots for speaking gigs and I couldn't fill them, but now they're coming in like gangbusters. I think it's just a really good way to show yourself. I mean, you you can't, you won't know that you've met your goals unless you set your goals, right? Yes. And I think that goal setting is a really great way to just say, here's what I want. 
and then celebrating it whenever it does happen. And having something like the chalkboard in your face every single day is just a reminder that you need to put in the work to make this happen. So, you know, I talk a lot about manifesting clients and the chalkboard being magic, but what it really is is a big daily visual reminder that you need to do the work. Hey, man. Yes, absolutely. So I want to talk about something I've heard you say lots of times, um, and that is that you attract what you track. And I think that's like one of the like biggest themes of this chalkboard method. So speak on that a little bit. You attract what you track. Yeah. So whenever we first started our chalkboard, and this kind of goes into the mantras part of it, but whenever we first started our chalkboard at Braid Creative, we drew 10 empty spots, but we did not specify the kinds of clients we were attracting. And we were just wanting to fill up those spots with clients with cash. I remember that's what it was. We are filling up these spots with clients with cash. After working with 10 clients that were not so dreamy, I literally had um, I had a client who um, sold concrete and he was great. <laughs> he was actually like a really fun, interesting guy and he was really into metaphysics. So we got along well, but it was definitely was not the dream project. And I remember one day Tara and I actually had a meeting with a used car salesman, which I know sounds like a joke, but legit we were sitting in a used car facility. What would you call that? Used car place. Yeah. Facility sounds good. Facility (laughs) is about what it was. And we're talking like the guys who are screaming on commercials and they have those like balloon Wacky inflatable arm guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wacky inflatable arm guys outside. And it, it was just bad bad vibes. And we were sitting there talking to this guy. And I remember two hours later, he offered me a cup of water. And so it wasn't a bottle. It was a cup of water. And I felt like I was about to be roofied. And I knew that if I took a sip of this water, like it would hit my gag reflex and I would throw up all over the table. Like this is how grossed out I was. So Tara and I literally drove home from this meeting and we looked at our chalkboard and we were like, we've got to make this work for us a little bit better. So we decided to start tracking what we attract. And but to do that, to attract the dream customers that we wanted, we knew that we needed to focus on, well, attracting dream customers. So we we consulted Jay about this. We were like, why are we not getting our dream customers? And he was like, because you need to get really specific about who that is. And so we sat down and had a conversation and we said, okay, we are attracting dream clients with cash. And what that looks like for us right now are photographers, designers. Now it's, you know, coaches and writers, um, but really just creative entrepreneurs. And I think that we had the self-limiting belief that creatives don't have money. And it's just not true. So like, don't impose your own self-limiting beliefs on yourself as you're making your goals, because half the time it's just not true. And so we drew a little magnet with little like charge lightning bolts coming out of it um, on our chalkboard to remind us of our mantra that we are attracting dream clients with cash. And maybe we even drew like a heart on the other side with an arrow going through it um, because we want to love our clients and, and we do. And so then we started attracting our dream clients and only filling up spots with dream clients. And it was also what gave us the visual guidance to say no to not so dreamy clients because we wanted, we only had so many spaces. We wanted to save them for the most dreamy people. A couple things I want to talk about there. So yes to the like attracting the dream clients and getting really specific there. I also think the whole attracting what you track really plays into all the other metrics that you can track on the chalkboard as well. So even if it's your social media, you're not setting goals, you're simply tracking it. Like you can see that growth and you put more more like work into seeing those grow as you track them. Um, and another thing that I used to do uh, is I was out, I would actually track the things that I said no to. So I, on my chalkboard, I would put like a big N-O, <laughs> And then keep a tally of the things that I would say no to, whether it was clients that weren't the right fit or whether it was, you know, collaborations or projects or blog posts or whatever it was that people were wanting me to write, the things that I said no to. And again, with the idea that I wanted to be attracting lots of opportunities, but I wanted to maintain my control over what it was that I said yes and no to. And I think that 
as you put like the power of like writing something like that down and tracking it, you are, you're inviting so much more of that like into your business. Um, and you are attracting the things that you are tracking. So whether it's, whether it's, you know, selling digital products or growing your social media presence or simply saying no to things, I think that putting like incorporating those things into that chalkboard, um, is really awesome. And, um, I like that you guys, there made it like made it almost an art project of like you know creating these these little graphics that would communicate at least to your brain as you're looking at it that like I'm not just going to be attracting clients with cash like Mm -hmm. you know smelly faces with money signs like I want to be attracting clients that we love and I think that um I don't know. I love it. This is all the reasons I love the chalkboard method. Well, and I actually love the idea of tracking what you say no to, even if it's just tally marks. So Mm -hmm. I know that last week you set a goal for yourself to say no to five things because you were feeling really overwhelmed. And you wrote about that. You wrote an article about it at beingboss.club. And it really inspired me. And I love the idea of tracking what you say no to because I think that a lot of us really suffer from the fear of missing out. I know that I do, especially as our business grows and that as our brand grows, we get a lot of opportunities and we're asked to do a lot of things. And we want to say yes to all of them because most all of them sound really amazing, but there's only so much of us, right? So I think that the idea of tracking what you say no to is a really great way to eliminate the fear of missing out by bringing the power of choice into the equation. Yes, that's absolutely what it's done. It's worked really, really well. (laughs) So I've heard also about people tracking rejections and like making it a goal to get 100 rejections in a year, which I think is really fantastic because then what it means is that you're putting yourself out there more than not. And by making it a game to get rejections, you don't take it so personally. And at the same time, there are only so many times that you can get rejected before you also get a big resounding yes from a really great opportunity. So I love that idea. And this just goes to show that there are so many different ways that you can do a chalkboard method. And there are so many different kinds of things that you can track. So one thing I want to mention is that As we started to grow as a business, our chalkboard started to grow as well. And the things that we started to track started to grow. So whenever we first started, our chalkboard literally had 10 spots on it. Then we made room for our mantra and our little icons. Then we started to make room shortly after we launched, or maybe a year after we launched, we decided to launch some braid e-courses. And so then we started tracking those and how many of those we were selling every single month. And I will say, I want to mention here that our time frame that we typically do, and I think that you do this also, Emily, is quarterly. And the time frame of how you're tracking your goals is so important because if you're redoing your chalkboard every single week, I don't think that it gives it time to really settle in and make it a part of your life. I and I, I keep trying to find I've been thinking about this over the weekend and I keep trying to find the words around why quarterly is good. But I think that you just have to give your chalkboard time to work. But you also have to be able to revisit it every quarter because you are evolving as a person. Your brand is evolving, your offerings are evolving. Um, everything about you is evolving, but I think that quarterly is just a good amount of time. Yeah, you have to, I mean, the whole part of it working is you looking at it, like you seeing it and going, oh, you know, I have, you know, four spots this quarter and I'm a month in and I have three left and I need to like hustle things out. Like I think, I think that by having a whole quarter to look at it every single day just sort of gets drilled in. And if you're looking at it, if it's changing every week, you're not, it's not getting in your head the way it needs to get in. Um, I will also say now our chalkboard has, so at Braid Creative, we can take on, we change it between 12 and 15 clients per quarter, just depending on how much of our own projects we're working on that quarter. But let's say it's 12 clients per quarter. There have been times where we've literally filled the last four on the last day of the month of the quarter. So I think that's where it starts to feel really magical is like, okay, we need to close on four clients literally in 24 hours to meet our chalkboard goals. Yeah. And it's worked. And so that's the thing I want to say is give it time to work, but then also be revisiting it every month. Um, 
people have asked me a lot about like, so are you tracking what you close on or what's in progress? We've tried it a lot of different ways. We've even had two chalkboards. I think this is something I've never mentioned before. So we have the magic chalkboard. I put that in air quotes because that's the chalkboard that really tracks what we're closing on. And then we have kind of a more functional chalkboard. And that's where we can just literally see what we've got in progress from the last quarter. So we'll move clients that we've closed on from the last quarter over to our other chalkboard, which is kind of in progress. And there are other tools that you can use in conjunction with your chalkboard. So we even have a big cork board map and we've put pins in the different um, states and cities and even countries that our clients have come from. And so that's a really fun, also visual way to um, track what we attract. And from all over the world, we can see kind of a breakdown of how many of our clients are local versus national or even international. You can also use, I have a huge Stendig calendar, which is that big black and white calendar that's in all Helvetica. Um, You could also probably incorporate that into your chalkboard method and track some goals there on post-it notes. So again, this is the art part of chalkboard method is that it's not, there's not one exact way to do it. But again, we have templates for you guys. So there are many different ways that you can try this. And I've even been doing a lot of research and Um, setting up Skype calls with people who have heard about the chalkboard method and are taking a stab at it in their own way. And it's so fun to talk to them and really see how they're tracking their chalkboard and then seeing where there are holes in their process or how the chalkboard is pointing out some business needs that they're not meeting. I don't know. It's just interesting stuff. It is. And I think I think the flexibility of it is one of the things that makes it so helpful and so applicable for so many kinds of businesses. I mean, because mine's the same, like, you know, I'll use one format for a quarter, two or maybe three, but then, you know, I'll remove a service or add a service or launch an e-course or add another social media platform or decide to track something else in my business. And every time, every time that I do this, the chalkboard changes a little bit, but the method of using it stays the exact same. Like you still are tracking the things that are important to you in your business at that given time. Um, and I've also had like supplementary like chalkboarding items. Like um, a couple of years ago, I got this really big roll of craft paper and mapped out like 18 months of products and launches and things that I wanted to be creating. And again, like on some hand, that's just like, a big task list I put on the wall. But on the, on another hand, it's something that I'm putting like in my in my like circle of vision that I'm seeing every day and that makes me work on it. It makes me work on the things that are important to me. It's important enough that I want to put it on my wall um, and I'm going to be seeing enough that I'm going to be like pushed into action to actually make the things that I want to accomplish happen. And I think that um, I think that's that's really just what the chalkboard is. It's this this big visual reminder to do the work and make the things that you want to happen happen. Good and stuff. And you know, this is why I love bullet journaling so much. Whenever you did the bullet journal post on being boss.club, I was so inspired because it's very much like the chalkboard method where there's no right or wrong way to do it. You can get on Pinterest and put in bullet journal and see really amazing artsy journals or really just simple nuts and bolts lists. And so for bullet journaling, I felt really overwhelmed by that. So I started really simple and really small. And I knew that if I could do that, as I got the hang of it, I could start to really make it my own and really dig in with making it a little more complex or interesting, um, changing up what I'm tracking. So I've been bullet journaling now for two weeks. Nice. And yeah, yeah. And it's going really well. And it's holding me accountable daily for the things that are on my chalkboard quarterly. So I love using multiple tools. And I want to mention that these physical real life tools do not replace our digital tools that are helping keeping all of our team on track. So we still have Asana for tracking our projects. We still have Evernote for creating our agendas and dumping out our ideas. We still have, I mean... Uh, we All still the have fresh books, right? You know, we still have fresh books for actually literally accounting for the money, right? Um, and we we have a ton of online tools that we're still calendars, our calendars, right? 
All the things. Yeah. Well, and I think you just said something that I I think is a really great place to sort of hit on is this accountability piece. Like when you are working for yourself, you are the person holding yourself accountable, period. And the more the more you can make these things easy for yourself, because I know like any given quarter, like I don't need what quarter is it right now? Like, I don't even think I know. <laughs> OK, that actually leads me to ask you this. Are you uh-huh. still chalkboard methoding? No. <laughs> Okay, I'm so glad that you say that. Horrible, almost, I, but also well, not. Well, I mean, don't feel horrible. No. So I, so my chalkboard was living in my house for a long time, and then my sister finally built the work shed of her dreams. Yep, which is like this beautiful little writing it shed makes with me a loft. Sick. It's and adorable. So now, <laughs> so now our chalkboard lives over there. And what's funny is. She actually has the work in progress chalkboard, like the physical chalkboard that was tracking our work in progress because our chalkboard, the magical one, is bolted to my wall in my house. And I just didn't want to deal with unbolting it to the wall. And it still literally has fourth quarter from last year braid projects on it. And so I felt I'm I'm feeling really inspired after having this conversation with you to revisit it. And this might be a great way to show our listeners or at least tell them how the chalkboard works. So I want to brainstorm with you, Emily, like what should I track on this chalkboard? Oh, I don't even know because I'm in the same place as you where, you know, we're officially stopping making or stopping taking client work, at least for a little while. Um, And so you and I, like our goals have simply changed immensely. Like this isn't just little shifts in our quarterly chalkboards anymore these are like scrapping old chalkboard methods or models at least and recreating what it is that we're tracking so literally um, our business model has changed completely completely changed and so as you're so this is another thing that i want to point out is that creating a chalkboard for your business is a really great way of looking at your business model (laughs) right and what it is that you need to be working for i mean i uh, since stopping using it, I've certainly felt more scattered um, just in terms of like, what am I working for? And at the moment, I'm working to, you know, complete some client projects and getting, you know, being boss systemized. But there isn't anything I need to be or there isn't anything I've needed to be tracking lately so much as I know there is coming up things that I need to be tracking. So let's brainstorm this. What do we need to be tracking? Well, OK, so big goals for us uh-huh. is really increasing our brand awareness and getting some more reach out there so that we can get more impact out there for creative entrepreneurs. And we need to figure out what that actually looks like. So um, we've also been getting really into newsletters and building our list. Um, So for me, I would love to be able to double our list by the end of the year. So maybe something that we can do is break that down by quarter and really look at what our newsletter goals are. So I would love to track newsletters. I agree with that. I would love newsletters is definitely a huge part of that. I would really love to track downloads. So one of the things that um, that we've experienced is not like a lull in downloads. They're not going down by any means, but I have felt like they're not quite growing as much as I would like for them to. So I think for me, tracking and setting some really big, amazing goals around our like iTunes subscribers um, and downloads from iTunes and SoundCloud is one of the things that I want to track. Okay, so I want to point out here that I'm starting to get a little scared around this goal setting. <laughs> already. Th- I Your face actually is already mention, dropped. <laughs> I want to mention the fear that is coming up is not what I would have expected. The fear that I'm feeling right now is why haven't we figured this out already? Right. Well, it's because we've been figuring out everything else, (laughs) everything else. So, you know, we have relaunched our website. We've started blogging. We have started uh, or we're we're taking on all of these speaking gigs and we've launched our project with Paul and Jason. And we've been doing like we've been doing a ton of things. And I think it is now like now that we have all of those things figured out, the website's launched, our team is making amazing things happen. We're getting some projects under our belt, like it's time for the next things. And like this is this is simply it. Don't let it don't let it fear you. (laughs) Let it drive you, Kathleen. (laughs) 
I think the word is scare. Don't let no, it scare you. you. No, I'm not. Don't let it fear you. No, I guess that would actually be the other way around, right? Don't let it scare you. Fine, we'll use that. <laughs> okay, so um, so we've got newsletters, we've got downloads. I think another thing that we could track are we do our vacations, our being boss vacations. But one of the things that we've started to think about are being boss weekends. Yes. So things like going to Venture Pop, which you can learn more about at beingboss.club slash Venture Pop. We'll be speaking in New Orleans there. But really, whenever we go to conferences, finding opportunities to connect with our tribe Mm -hmm. there. So we're going to be holding a party down there. Um, FreshBooks is bringing us up to Toronto in September, which is super exciting. You can get on our mailing list to find out more about that. We'll send you more information as soon as we get the details hammered out. But really, I want to start tracking how we start, how we engage with our community. And so for me, that looks like that face-to-face interaction is so important. I think that's where the magic is. And I think that's what's going to set our podcast apart from a lot of the other podcasts. Something else I've been thinking about tracking or at least really focusing on whenever it comes to being boss is we talk a lot about doing the work, but what is it that we really want to be known for and how can we really, really help people? So for me, it's being who you are 100% of the time. And so that's something that I really want to double down on. Like I really want to figure out how do you know who you are? Like what are some tools for bringing more of who you are into the work that you do? So it's something that I want to explore. But again, this is me brainstorming it out with you. How do I measure and track that? Or maybe that's just like a theme for my chalkboard. So maybe instead of a mantra, it's kind of this theme of, okay, I'm tracking all this stuff, but I'm doubling down on personal branding. Sure. Well, and I think I think that just plays into all of the things that you are tracking. So, you know, Speaking in general, like if you were to say yes to a speaking gig that was, you know, getting you to go talk about payment processors or whatever, like that doesn't belong on a chalkboard where it's themed on personal branding and helping people be who they are. So I do think that's just a really good theme. But I also and I think it's just bringing that into all the things that you're tracking. Um, And God, we can certainly brainstorm this. I like this idea. Content upgrades out your ass, basically. (laughs) So we could be tracking content upgrades or even making. So this is something that you could do on a chalkboard is make a checklist. So we have our pillars of content that we're always hitting on every time we record a podcast. And so it's everything from boss mindset to boss tools and tactics to habits and routines. Basically, we could write out every single topic that we're always talking on and have a list that says content upgrades and then check it off as those are created. And then it's this visual reminder of these goals that we have. (laughs) Yeah, I think so. I think that's exactly how we do it. And I think something else that we, I want to track is saying no to things. Like bringing that into what it is that you and I are tracking. Because again, me doing the blog post around saying five or saying no to five things was brought on by the fact of that I needed to say no to five things. Because Well, you already really said awful. your no. You right. already said your five no's. We're I'm just, not allowed to say any more no's. It's so funny. I have to mention this because there is this, um, oh, mastermind retreat that yep. I really wanted to go to with you. It's right. this mastermind group that we're in with Tara Gentili. And there's a physical get together um, <laughs> later this fall. And I knew that you were saying five no's that week. So I waited until right after you finished your fifth no. No, you, you on Friday. So it was the last oh, day the of my of no's, week. right? And I think I told you that I had said my five no's. And you were like, good, because I really wanted to ask you about this thing. But I didn't want to until you were done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I was just like, good, that makes me happy. But I would have I would have said yes to that regardless. Um, So no, but I I think that it would be really good for us to really get into that mindset of, you know, we are sort of the creators of our own destiny. Like we can say no to things. We have the control to do that um, by tracking it. That way we are we're less driven to say yes to everyone and given more of an okay to say no to things. 
So we get a lot of questions about the chalkboard, like how does it actually work? And I always respond by <laughs> asking the person, have you physically created your chalkboard yet? Or whatever it is that you're, we use the term chalkboard, just another disclaimer, we use the word chalkboard method to really describe any sort of method for tracking, any sort of big visual method for tracking. So people will say, okay, I get it, I get it, but how does it actually work? Okay, but have you actually created your chalkboard? So that's like the first question. And a lot of times they're like, no. Like it's not enough to just understand the concept. You have to actually do it. Another question that I get a lot is, it's not working. <laughs> I mean, for as many people create their chalkboard, they're like, oh my God, it worked within a week. I'm a believer. But there are some people that are like, okay, I did it and it's not working. What's going on? So that's whenever I tell them to get more specific about their goals. I think that if it's not working, you have to get a little bit more clarity around what it is that you want so you can do the work to make the asks for what you want. Um, so I've had people ask me, what if it's working too well? And I made 10 <laughs> spots and they got filled within a week, which can happen also. And I think that's an indicator that you need to raise your prices or narrow in a little bit more on the specific projects and work that you want to be doing. Something I want to point out really quick is that I think it always works. <laughs> like, I don't think there's like a non-working chalkboard. If it's not working, you're not paying attention to it, which means you're not doing the work that's going to make it work. I think that, you know, if it's working too well, then it's working also to tell you that you need to adjust something in your business. If you're not filling up the spots and it's telling you you don't need to have that many spots or you need to be changing what you're selling or how you're selling it. I think that no matter what you do, the chalkboard method is working, but it's also only working as hard as you are. Okay, so here's what I want to challenge us to do. I want us to create our chalkboards this week. Yes. And I want our blog posts at beingboss.club because you guys, we're writing articles every single day to correspond with the theme of the week or kind of around the topics of our podcasts. We have contributors and then Emily and I are both writing ourselves. I'm even uploading my periscopes to our um, website. So we've got some video content on there as well. But I want to challenge us this week at beingboss.club to share our chalkboards Love and it. to show what those are. Um, so Emily, you and I might have to get together on the side and do a little goal setting and decide what those goals are if we're tracking some of the same things. Though it might be kind of interesting if we were to independently make goals for our shared business and our shared brand, <laughs> we're going to bring you know, them together. They're going to be the exact same anyway, Kathleen. <laughs> <laughs> but agree. I know, right? <laughs> um, it might, it just might be interesting to see, you know, what our goals are. So let's share our chalkboards. And then again, if you want to learn more about chalkboarding or if you need more step by step guidance on how to create, your goals and to start tracking them and start attracting more of what you want, we are offering an online course at beingboss.club slash chalkboard. And you can find out more and sign up there. And we'll also have some freebies for you as well if you're interested, but can't quite commit to a course right now. Hey there, bosses. Kathleen and I get what's ailing you. If you're like many of the cool bosses we've met on our journey, you're probably feeling like no one gets what you do. You're probably really wanting to grow your clan of cool creative bosses. Or maybe you just love being boss so much that you're hurting for more content from us being boss ladies. Well, you've got it. The Being Boss Clubhouse is where we are cultivating a tribe of seriously rad bosses and it is currently open for new members. And there's a trove of creative bosses waiting just inside to meet you. Our community in the clubhouse makes Kathleen and I seriously happy chats, debates, giggles, and more are going down on the daily in our exclusive Slack group. And beyond Slack, we're sharing so much with our members. Every month, we're hosting a book club, getting on live with our bosses for a Q&A call, and releasing secret, seriously candid episodes available only to the cool cats that join the clubhouse. If this gets you jazzed up, we hope you'll check out what we have going on. Head on over to beingboss.club slash clubhouse to learn more. Registration is open for a limited time, so be sure to check it out. We hope to see you there. Thank you for listening to Being Boss. Please be sure to visit our website at beingboss.club where you can find show notes for this episode, listen to past episodes, and discover more of our content that will help you be boss in work and life. 
Did you like this episode? Please share it with a friend and show us some love by leaving a rating and review on iTunes. Do the work, be boss, and we'll see you next week. Kathleen. <laughs> I say that. And I just have a man's is, voice. That's Kathleen. That's like whenever I get in trouble as a kid. <laughs> Kathleen. Right? It was always like this. Kathleen. Right? Kathleen. That's what Lily calls you. Put your clothes. Cute. Put your clothes on. Kathleen. <laughs> well, Kathleen. I just want to like start over. No, I keep going. Mean- keep going. <laughs> Okay, so Jay recommended using poster board, but I had a chalkboard in front of my face. So use what I have. I have a chalkboard that I was taking all these photos. Oh, God. Let me find a way. (laughs) Don't make this harder than it has to be, Kathleen. We've got this. Like 80 episodes in, I'm all of a sudden scared of talking on a podcast. Right? Just breathe it out. Is is my man voice intimidating you? (laughs) I don't know.